Hello once again. Uh, welcome to episode 811. 811 that is. 811, whatever you want to put it. Uh, the topic today is going to be a bit more of a tender one. Um, and the topic to basically today is when will you stop beating yourself up? What will it take? You may be surprised this may be relevant to you, so I invite you to watch so you can maybe check this out and see if it does in fact match you match your experience. And if it does, great, because I'm going to deliver some teachings that will help you get beyond it, so to speak, rather than ignoring it. Oh, I'm already going. Oh, yeah. I already know where I'm going to go. Okay, before I jump into the topic and unleash everything, let me explain who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out from looking around the broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker and love and relationships expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a best selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. Actually, I'm the author of the best selling book. It was the right way around. And the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, for men and women who have healthy relationships. Um, and I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. That informs my work, it inspires my, my calling, my messaging, and also what started these talks over two years ago, two and a half years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Things are shifting though. Um, I did a talk earlier in another group, um, talking about how I've got this new piece that's brewing. It's actually in alignment with things I've been talking about for the last year and a half. I'm not gonna talk about it now because it's not ready for prime time just yet. But I want to talk about today is about the um, self-flagellation that most people do to themselves, emotionally speaking and mentally speaking. Usually not physical. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> so the topic, again, this is episode number, sorry, let me, let me finish the introduction. This is episode 811 of an ongoing series of talks I've now done for over two and a half years. So there's plenty to look at. I'll give you the links at the back end of the broadcast, but where you can find the replay so you can check out other talks I've done. I've got a feeling I might refer to a couple of them in this talk because there's a tie in I can already feel brewing. The topic today, again, in case you missed it in the title, is um, when are you going to stop beating yourself up? What will it take? And what I'm saying about, why I'm talking about this is because it's very, um, how am I going to say this? I guess basically simply say it's a very common thing people do. Now, women do, okay, generally speaking, women do this more than men do. Only because women live more in the emotional space than men do. And they tend to, and I'm using tendencies here, I'm not saying all women, so please don't like say, well, I don't do that and they don't do that. It's like, this is a generality. So bear in mind, I'm speaking as a generality here. Most people, let me, let me make it neutral, even easier. Most people tend to carry around a rather large sack full of self-degrading, self-limiting, self-debilitating judgments, blame, emotional upsets, etc. Usually it all comes under the heading of, mostly it comes the heading of guilt and resentment as the two main um, touchstones, maybe it's an interesting word, for those upset, upset emotions. And it comes about a lot of times from relationships, that's why it's about this, 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 topic is, is, this topic is relevant, because we carry around some sort of judgment, blame, guilt, upset against ourselves for how we, how we did or didn't participate in a relationship which includes if we suffer at the hands of an abusive partner, for example, we may be carrying a lot of self-flagellation as well. Even though it's their assault of us that happened, but we carry in the blame inside ourselves because somehow we think that we brought it on ourselves. There are many, many stories, many stories and reports of people who have basically felt responsible for being abused. If that's, about, if that's something you're dealing with, this will help you, and I may speak to that directly later on, but I want to make sure you get this piece that is important, which is none of this is permanent, none of this is required. So let me get into the main topics about this. So, as I said, guilt and resentment are two of the main touchstones or pivot points for this self-abuse, sorry, self, um, where's self-abuse? To beat yourself up emotionally for not being perfect is self-abuse. So let me say that off the bat, because frankly, so many people are going around beating themselves up, judging themselves and blaming themselves. That's self-abuse. Now, you wouldn't abuse somebody, would you? And you wouldn't want to be abused. So why do you do that to yourself emotionally? Let me explain why this happens, first of all, because that may, be, may help you understand why you're doing it, and then give you some solutions, because there are things you can do about this. So, how do I approach this? Let me do it this way. Okay, so stuff happens in relationships stuff being challenges upsets arguments discords hurt feelings yelling blaming judging all sorts of stuff like that happen in lots of relationships not every one of them but lots of them 
And at the end of it, there's a sense of walking away with wounds inside. And I've talked about this a couple of days ago about, about the, the about, I was talking about time does not heal all wounds, time numbs all wounds, emotionally speaking. So those wounds that you carry around are internal because of things that didn't work out the way you wanted, or somehow you feel responsible for some of the things that happened. Hi, Sue. Nice to see you in the broadcast. Thanks for joining me. So this um, choice is something that many of us do. It's not something you're unique about, so just to be, just be okay. It's not your thing only. It belongs to many of us sort of thing. I mean, I've done it myself, so this is not something I'm speaking about as theory. Been through it, been there, done that, got the T-shirt. So this is for you to get an understanding of too. Okay. Yeah, I'm deciding, I was deciding which way to go. Let's talk about the guilt and resentment piece I dropped earlier. Something I learned in a, in a seminar many, 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 many years ago, still relevant it seems, is that the main reason why we carry around these, uh, why we beat ourselves up and judge ourselves and blame ourselves for something we did or didn't do right, is because deep down inside, we believe we're good people. You believe you're a good person. I believe I'm a good person. It's kind of like the baseline of who we are. Now, let me, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching these lots of branching routes on my talks. So I'm deciding where to go. So, you know you're a good person. However, you have these bad things you've either done or received in past relationships, and it doesn't reconcile. Because good people don't do bad things. So there's a judgment in there, or blame, or sense of guilt in there, because somehow you've, you've betrayed your goodness by doing something bad. So you judge it, and you blame yourself, and you judge yourself. That's not unusual. We all, no, not we all, most of us do that. Because here's the thing. If you don't think you're a good person, you won't care what you do. If you're a good, if you think you're a bad person, hurting somebody else doesn't matter to you. You don't care. If you're a bad person, hurting somebody's feelings, who cares? That's the thing. Bad people, so to speak, in that terms of good and bad people, don't have a concern in the world about not doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. They don't care. If they do the right thing, it's pure coincidence, not something they could aim for. So if you feel any sense of guilt or resentment, it's because you think you're a good person. Which is, excuse me. Actually, if you think, if you're feeling guilt and resentment, you know you're a good person. Because the thing is, you are. And we make mistakes. So, in the idea of guilt and resentment is that, let me take guilt as an example. This is something, again, I learned from a seminar many, many years ago. Is that guilt basically is the. Um, the feelings, the terms, the judgments, the words, the statements that make you because sorry, that you put together because of something because of something you did or something that happened. So if it was a guilt about a bad breakup, you might be thinking about, you know, I hurt the other person's feelings, I betrayed them, I lied to them, I hurt their, I, I was a mean person, I didn't respect them, um, I didn't do any, I didn't forgive them, I just hated them and I, I judged them and cursed them out. That's all the stuff that you did wrong in quotes. On the other side of the page, basically, you're a good person. You don't go around doing that as a habit. You don't judge people. You don't ups you don't blame people. You don't yell at people. You don't get upset with people. You don't decry them. All that sort of stuff. So what happens is you've got two sides of this um, appearance thing about yourself. On one side, you've basically Made a mistake. You, you've hurt people. You've hurt somebody. You've upset them. You, you, you've cursed them out. You, you beat them up. You did all these different things that were bad. On the other side, you're a good person. Who doesn't do those things, but they don't go together. I'm giving it. This is a very cliff notes version of something I learned years ago, and I'm not giving it due justice, but it help, hopefully help. So the thing is, because these two, th two things don't go together, there has to be something in between them to keep them apart, and that thing between them is guilt. It's a tool we use to separate our bad things we did from being a good person. That's how guilt works. Resentment, actually, is the flip side of guilt, in the sense that guilt is self-inflicted. Resentment is inflicted on others. So if your partner beat you up, hurt you, made you feel bad, all these different things in your past relationship, maybe they walked out on you, maybe they cheated, maybe they were workaholics, maybe they were addicts, whatever it was that was bad and you broke up with them, maybe they neglected the kids, maybe they didn't pay your money, money, all these different things they may have done that are bad. But the truth is you know that that person was a good person, or you like to think they were a good person because you were in a relationship with them. In this context, again, you have two situations that don't fit together. 
there's there's bad and there's good. So to put, so put something between them to keep them distinctly separate is called resentment. Resentment is for outward, guilt is for inward. This is the way they work. So having an understanding of both of these tools is powerful because you start to realize that it's a means to protect yourself. Because what you're doing is, you're, or I should say, you're protecting the idea of yourself because you're, you're protecting the idea of being a good person. Excuse me, good person, that side. Yeah, good person. When you, in fact, did some bad things. Here's the thing. When you understand how this works, the mechanics of this, there is a way out. If you are dealing with your self-recrimination, your self-judgments, and you're beating yourself up, because that's what I talked about in the title, then the way through that guilt, the way to dissolve the guilt, because what you're doing is you're removing the negative stuff. Negative, I feel excited, I feel excited I now. The negative stuff and coming back to wholeness again is this lo lovely thing, the F word, called forgiveness. Forgiveness is a tool that people overlook a lot. Forgiveness is a tool that people misapply. Forgiveness is a means to really release yourself from a, a prison you put yourself in. But most people don't think about forgiveness that way. And also, people you misuse forgiveness, and I'll explain that in a second too. So you're at a place where you basically got a, a, a discord between being a good person and being a bad person, or I should say, being a good person does bad things. The guilt's in the way from you coming back to yourself because you're living on the side of the bad stuff. When you use forgiveness, it dissolves the guilt because what it does is it forgives the judgments you placed against yourself that made you feel bad of what you did. You made mistakes, you did whatever happened, but it's the judgments that are locking you down. It's the blame you're putting against yourself for what happened that is trapping you in that prison of guilt. And when you learn how to forgive yourself and you fully forgive yourself, then you no longer need to worry about that. Or I should say, you no longer need to hold yourself in that place of, of um, entrapment anymore. You forgive yourself, you can bless yourself, you can be grateful to yourself, and you come back to being whole again. Funny thing is, forgiveness doesn't just work with, with guilt, it also works with resentment. Because what forgiveness does is it releases and removes judgments. Guilt is judgment against self. Resentment is, is judgment against others. Forgiveness heals both sides of the judgment, both ways of judgment. And the thing about it though is that judgment isn't about forgiving the other person. This is the trap people fall into, or should say, this is the mistake people believe about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a self-releasing method. It's like the keys to the jail cell for yourself. Because resentment isn't about the other person. Resentment's about your feelings about them. And resentment's about your judgments about them. So resentment is a means of separating yourself from other people. Guilt is a means of separating yourself from yourself, so to speak. And when you forgive yourself, either way, you become free. And it's the understanding that it's a tool that works both ways that can give you freedom in any situation, whether it's with yourself or with other people. It's a very powerful healing process after you've been in a bad relationship or you made a mistake in a relationship or you had a bad breakup, whatever that is, so you can come back to wholeness again. It actually works in a relationship too. If you've been running any judgments against the other person in resentment or you've been running judgments against yourself and you've been feeling guilty, by using forgiveness, you get to free yourself. And that is probably one of the most powerful tools in my toolbox to move through disdain and self-regret, sorry, disdain and regretful feelings that we have to carry inside ourselves. Becoming aware is the first step. I talked about this a couple of, yesterday and a couple of days ago as well. This has been a topic that's been running through my talks lately. Um, I think I need to go there. Yeah, I think I need to go there. Okay. <laughs> Over the past year, year and a half or so, I've been talking a lot about self-support and self-love. That's been kind of my message a lot. And it's, it's another one that talks about that. The talk, oh, sorry, before I jump into that, let me finish up the last piece. Um, if you don't have any practice with forgiveness, I can recommend a couple of books. I can also offer you a free a, a um, PDF that I have on forgiveness that I've given out many times before to my clients and also to, uh, as a gift from my book that will help you to find your way back. So I'll put a link in the comments. Um, you can put a comment in here. Um, actually, uh, do, do, do. I'll put a link in the comments for a contact form so you can reach out to me and ask for the forgiveness sheet and I can send it to you. That'll work easily. That's probably the best way of doing it. Because that gives me your email address and I can email, email it to you. So I'll put that in the comments. Um, a couple other links I want to put in the comments. 
it's funny because I'm realizing now as I do these talks, there's usually a lot of things that are uh, resources I provide or can give you that are things that I offer. So a couple things I'm going to put in the comments. So I'll put a link in the comments for a contact um, form you can fill out to reach out to me to ask for the forgiveness worksheets. I'll send them to you. The books I recommend, just so you know, are, are um, Radical Self-Forgiveness. Excuse me, Radical, Radical Forgiveness. And then the second book is Radical Self-Forgiveness. They're both by um, Colin Tipping. Good books for that sort of process. So that's another resource you can go to. Um, speaking of books, I will put my link for my book in the comments because that'll help you. And then two more things, two, three, <laughs> three more things I put in the comments. And we've got a whole list of things in the comments now. Um, so the self forgiveness link up, sorry, the link to reach out to me so you can get self forgiveness worksheets will be in the comments. My book will be in the comments. Um, I will put a link in there for a discovery session with me, a complimentary chat, because if you're stuck and you're not trying to work through this, you're carrying judgments from your past relationship, you're feeling constricted or not feeling free. Or you just want some help in getting clarity about how to make your next steps towards a relationship. I'll put a link in the comments for that, which is um, a, a complimentary clarity conversation with me. Number four, yes, number four is, is my self-love practice. I keep coming back to it because it's so fundamental. If you, you start loving yourself and doing a daily practice of self-love, which my guided self-love practice will help you with, your relationship with yourself will transform. If you do it for 30 days straight as a, as a guideline, your relationship with yourself, your experience of yourself, and your alignment with yourself will transform. I'm adamant because it works. That simple. So that'll be in the comments. And the last thing I put in the comments is a is my group course, my new group coaching program I'm putting together called Coming Home to Yourself. Because if you're finding challenges being with yourself, this will help you. And it's a pay what you want because it's a new um, beta test. And that'll be in the comments for you to check out as well. So there's five links in the comments. Whew. Keep you busy. So the other thing I was going to talk about as a PS. I talked about this actually for the first time publicly in a Facebook group earlier, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I've been really getting clear that something's coming through, some new work I'm doing and some new messaging I'm doing, which is really not so much about relationship as much as about self-support, as you may have guessed. For the last year and a half, I've been talking about self-supported practices pretty much every second, third broadcast, and they're getting more common now because it's vital more than ever. And a term I came up with um, this morning, where, you know, I was in a, I had a session with my body worker, who's an amazing guy, and we were talking, and this this thing just clicked in my head about this description of what it is I'm helping to teach and facilitate with clients. So I shared it earlier today on my another broadcast in another place. I'm going to do it here so you know what I'm talking about. What I'm teasing out because it's not real yet. It's not it's not set up yet, but you can definitely follow me if you want to find out more information. I'm calling it. Um, what am I calling it? <laughs> Oh yes, it, it's it, initials of a, a PSL, PSL, which is, which is practical spiritual leadership. No, is, is it P? Basically, it's teaching you how to be a leader in your own life, and how to do it from a from a um, yeah practical spiritual way. Because that's the thing about this. All this stuff I'm talking about is really spiritual practice in a very physical, expressive, masterful way. So. That and more about that's coming later on. There's more about that coming. I'm just dropping the seeds now, so you go, "What's that?" So you'd be curious. Again, the links will be in the comments. This is um, a reminder. That this is my daily Facebook live that I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. So you can join me live any day when you can join me. It's seven days a week on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week. The replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can watch my replays on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby Author, and also on my YouTube channel. Sorry, but Facebook Facebook business page, you can like my page and follow me there. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's I think it's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can watch all my broadcasts there as well under a playlist called Messages for the Masculine. On that it's easy to sort through because YouTube lays out the broadcasts in more um, close order so you can look through the titles more easily. With Facebook it's a bit more spread out. Um, that I think is about it. I hope this made some sense to you. Again, if you want help, reach out to it. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate you liking it. Um, that's why I was talking to somebody, by the way. If you're watching on YouTube and go, who are you talking to? They were watching me live on Facebook. That's a key, key to come join me there, live every day. I th appreciate you watching. You've got some stuff to think about. I hope this has made some sense to you. It's given you some ideas to process and maybe some next steps. I'm going to put five things in the comments, which are next steps I recommend. And uh, with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. <laughs>